So for the past six years, we've been using a method called uh, carbonizing or carbonization on our knives to make sure that the locks don't stick when you try to unlock them. And the reason we have to do that is we make knives with full titanium frame locks so that the titanium is you know, doing full contact with the blade to get it to lock up. But titanium and steel together, um, like titanium is slightly a gummy metal. So when you just put them together without doing any sort of carbonization on the lock face, the blade and the handle just like stick together and it feels really gritty and gross. And we just don't like that. And like I said, titanium's a, li a little bit soft. So when we do the carbonizing, um, it puts a layer of carbide on top of the lock face and that just strengthens the titanium altogether. And so what I'm talking about is this right here is just an end mill. It's made out of carbide. So it's really strong. It's, uh, you know, I can't remember what the Rockwell is, but it's way stronger than traditional steel. And with that, we're able to uh, put them into an engraver like this, just a classy regular electric engraver with a piece of broken old end mill in the front. And then you apply electricity to it. And that way it electrically like transfers the carbide onto the handle. And yeah, we use just a, a regular electric engraver that you can get from, you know, Princess Auto or Canadian Tire or KBC Tools or those are all Canadian stores. Harbor Freight would be a good one. But yeah, like we don't use any sort of special, uh, you know, carbonizing unit. I'm not sure if they build them or anything, but this works just fine. You just need to have a power supply as well. And I guess that's the trickier part. This is our old anodizing setup, and this enables us to apply negative power to the part and positive power to the engraver, which I'll set up here in a second, and that way we get the carbide transferred. And I tape up the handle like this because I do, do all this stuff after anodizing and finishing now, so we just want to keep it all protected, and it's very easy, um, like, if I tap the engraver up here it'll you know spark and leave a big nasty uh, carbide divot on the handle so we don't want to do that at all so to mount the the handle i use this old uh, vice i think we got it with the tormac um, and it works great because it's just a small little thing and uh, does exactly what i need it to and uh, possibly a headphone al alert right now So that moves back and forth. And then it's got about 45 volts applied to it right now. So yeah, like I just said, you kind of like spread it on but it's very loud and all the sparks make it really hard for you to actually be able to see what you're doing. Um, so it just takes a little bit of being very careful and not jumping around too much. Now that's got a fresh layer of carbide all the way across the face there, except for that little blue corner in the back where I missed. So after you've done the, the carbonizing, it leaves the surface pretty rough and a lot of highs and lows. So what we're gonna do now is scotch bright them using these handy dandy uh, 3M scotch bright wheels that are usually about this big, but we love these things and use them a lot if you can't tell by the rouge stripe. Um, but we just wanna do that to smooth everything out just a little bit. You don't want to take away too much of the carbide. And I just kind of feel around for any spots that might be sticking up. And then we go and beat the crap out of it. So right now, before uh, I beat it up, it's a little bit gritty still and not completely smooth. 
so I get it a good lock up here. In doing that, it helps set the lock face and beat it in a little bit, so it it's kind of like it's been used a lot already and broken in, so it's not going to break in anymore. And also, it helps flatten everything down even more than the Scotch Brighting did, so that now we've got a pretty pretty smooth lock face, and we can do a little bit more uh, Scotch Brighting to make that a little bit better. But it doesn't stick. You don't need to pry the lock face open. And when I was beating it like that, it's also a great way to see if the lock is actually gonna fail. Because if anybody's using it harder than that, um, there's a problem. <laughs> like, it, I mean, if it fails for anything less than that, um, it can be a real problem. So it's a good way to test and make sure that every knife is good and it's not gonna shut on somebody's fingers. Thanks for watching our carbonizing video. A uh, bit of an update from the long one that we did uh, about six years ago. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and please like, subscribe and have a great day.